Hello, my name is Mark Hall. I'm a software architect and data mining consultant with the Pentaho Corporation. I live here in New Zealand, not very far away from where the Weka software was originally developed. This lesson is about using Weka in a distributed processing framework, such as Spark or Hadoop. So let's get on with it. So distributed Weka is a plugin for Weka 3.7 that allows Weka algorithms to run on a cluster of machines. You would use this when your data set is too large to load into main RAM on your desktop, or you are perhaps applying an algorithm that would just take too long to run on a single machine. In class two, you covered data stream mining. You saw sequential online algorithms that can be used to handle large data sets in the MOA framework and also inside of Weka using MOA. Distributed Weka works with distributed processing frameworks that use something called MapReduce. So this is a little bit different. It's more suited to large offline batch-based processing scenarios. So essentially your data is divided up over the nodes in a processing cluster, the machines in a processing cluster, and is conquered. Each piece is conquered independently of the other pieces. More on MapReduce shortly. The distributed Weka plugin is actually made up of two packages. First, there is something called distributed Weka base. So this is a package that provides general MapReduce style tasks for machine learning that are not tied to any particular MapReduce framework implementation. We'll discuss MapReduce in just a second. It uh, includes tasks for training classifiers and clusterers and computing summary statistics and correlations from the data. A second package is needed in order to apply the base package or the algorithms in the base package within a particular implementation of the MapReduce programming model. So in this lesson, we're going to be looking at uh, a uh, implementation for the Spark distributed processing environment. So we need, we'll need to install something called distributed Weka Spark as well. So this is a wrapper for the base tasks that works on the Spark platform. There is also a package, or several actually, that work with Hadoop, depending on which version or flavor of Hadoop that you have installed. So now let's return to MapReduce. MapReduce is the main pro processing model used by distributed frameworks such as Spark and Hadoop. MapReduce programs involve two phases, a map phase followed by a reduce phase. To start with, we have a data set, probably a large data set. This data set is divided up into disjoint subsets. The framework takes care of doing this for us. It then feeds a split of the data, a subset of the data, into a map task. Now, map tasks do their processing independently of all other map tasks. They're not aware of it, any of the other data splits or what the other tasks that may be running in parallel are doing. So the kind of operations that map tasks do include sorting the data, perhaps, filtering it in some way, or computing some kind of partial result. The output of map tasks are these partial results associated with a distinct key value. Now, the key values allow the framework to group together related intermediate results and pass them on to reduce tasks. So the reduce task's job is to take all of the values associated with one distinct key and aggregate them in some fashion. So they may count or add or do some averaging or some kind of aggregation which produces a final result. Now the job of the MapReduce framework itself is to provide all of this orchestration. So as I said, they handle splitting up the data for us. They handle invoking and initializing the map and reduce tasks. They provide redundancy and fault tolerance as well. So if there is some failure out on the cluster which causes map tasks to uh, abort processing before they finished or a reduced task to fail, the framework will take care of uh, ensuring that there are additional map and reduce tasks that can be started up to take care of and complete the processing. Okay, so the design goals of distributed Weka were to provide a similar experience to that of using standalone desktop worker. So it enables you to use any classification or regression learner in Weka, and also has some support for clustering as well. It also generates output, including evaluation output, 
that looks just like that produced by standard desktop Weka. The models that are output from distributed Weka are normal Weka models. So that means that they can be saved to your file system, loaded into desktop Weka at a later stage, and used for making predictions just like any other Weka model. So one thing that wasn't a goal of the package, initially at least, was to provide distributed implementations of every learning algorithm in Weka. One exception to this is k-means clustering, which was written specifically to work within the frameworks such as Spark and Hadoop. So we'll see exactly how Weka handles distributing uh, different types of models in a later lesson. So that's pretty much the end of our first lesson on distributed Weka. We learned what distributed Weka is. We've learned when you would want to use it under what conditions you would want to use it. We've learned what map uses, and we've taken a look at the basic design goals of distributed Weka. Okay, so in the next lesson, we'll take a look at installing distributed Weka, verifying that it's been installed correctly, and we'll start to take a look at some of the examples that come with distributed Weka. All right, so until next time.